under the spell of a full moon, where dreams mix with reality. It's your blood and your help. I want get away. Don't push me away. And the past and present cross paths. In your name, will echo through the ages. Playwright Michael Bradford creates theater with a deeply poetic voice. From these two hands, you see how huge they are, weathered. Why? Because when I had blood in these arms, breath in these lungs, I worked the land. I really love the, the narrative and the language and the structure of poetry because it, it operates on so many levels beyond the literal. I was a woman consumed by fire, covered with open sores inside and out. And I would go with your son, who was like a little boy made of cold water. Just to break down the human dilemma and love and desire and hate and challenges or whatever the case may be in the poetic realm, for me, um, opens up my understanding personally. In Olives in Blood, Bradford's newest play, and recently produced by the Connecticut Repertory Theater, voices from two different worlds, the poetic and the working class, share the stage to tell a distinctly Latin story one that centers around the famous Spanish playwright and poet Federico Garcia Lorca. I have this great line in the play that says, there was, there was no moon that morning. We were somewhere between the end and the beginning. And that is kind of where this play exists. Do you remember, there was no moon that morning. Of course there was a moon. The sun had yet to rise. We were somewhere between the end and the beginning. Playwrights who use language and manipulate it in a way that is interesting and new, I, I'm always gravitated towards that. Um, we live in a world today where you know, there's text speak, people are you know, truncating words and it's lost something. To be able to speak some of those words, to speak Lorca's words, to speak Michael's words, it, it takes me into, into another world. Your bare feet in your father's field, Senor Trescante, in the shadows cut by the moon and watch the earth bleed. In the way that he talks about human desire and blood, there's a line in the play where he says, you might blame your lips, you might blame your hands, you might blame your feet, but you cannot blame your blood. When I first read Olives and Blood, my thought was, wow, this is really, this writing has really taken a turn towards the more deeply poetic. They're sending a car for me because they want to know the truth, not some nonsense about what kind of moon or who goes to the, the truth. But instead of just rehashing history, Somewhere between realism and the magical, Bradford believes the theater is meant to open us up to new perspectives about the world and about ourselves. Look at me! The historian will give you, you know, what he or she sees as the facts of the, of the matter, and there will always, of course, be a little, a little bias in that, you know, but Aristotle argues that the poet is giving you the what is possible, like the what if, and that the community probably needs to know that. But to keep his writing grounded, well, that takes some life experience. And the art of living in two different worlds is something Bradford knows plenty about. He's such a down-to-earth guy because he had a whole nother life before he was a playwright. He was in the United States Navy, and he lived and worked on a submarine. While I was in the Navy and writing stationed out in uh, Seattle, I was dating a young lady who uh, loved the theater. And I literally had never been to the theater, not as a kid, not as an adult, I had never been in the theater. But um, she had tickets to the Underground Theater right there outside of Pike Place, and it was August Wilson's Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And I was undone. Like these people are memorizing this whole thing. Not only have they memorized it, but they're, they're living it to this degree. Who wrote that? Who wrote that? And it was beautiful. And I left out of there and said, I, I want to do that. Today, he's over the moon for theater. Here was a guy who had no real background in the theater and had this passion for writing and decided to take that leap to do it. And this Fulbright scholar and UConn professor is living proof that sometimes the stuff of dreams can actually anchor your life. Michael brings exactly what everyone who has participated in the building of the Connecticut Repertory Theater brings, a great teacher with an active professional life. In the glow of success, with productions of his plays in London, New York, and in regional theaters across the U.S., in Bradford's lyrical universe, there's an authentic voice that is eager to take us into new 
and uncharted what ifs. Look at me. I think the the ability to kind of step outside of just the momentary reality that you are sitting in allows the imagination to be what it came in the world to be. This is where my fortune would be made. For Spotlight on the Arts, I'm Edward Spickey.